Well, y'all, here we are again. It is part two of the Biblical Forensic Masterclass with myself and Elder Rodney Jones, the good doctor in the green room right now. And uh, we're getting ready to do part two, and today we're talking about the interrogation. Now, yesterday uh, we gave you a glimpse uh, of what forensic is. We'll try to recap uh, that in a minute. And we talked about uh, the crime that was committed in Chicago. Uh, it was a mock um, forensic testing that we did yesterday with the brother on the, the YouTube channel. Uh, and he was talking about how this man was murdered in the alley in a, in a cold Chicago winter. And he talked about the blood uh, coagulation and talked about the DNA and all these things. If you missed any of that, go to yesterday's show. For those of you watching this in the future, just go to part one of the biblical forensics, forensic uh, masterclass number one. And uh, today we're going to dive a little deeper in here with um, more some screen uh, helps and see if Ella Jones could help us make this make sense. Interrogations. If you've never been inter interrogated, I have and it's not pretty. I see you in 60. Get you thinking, and where the topics are hot, feel free to comment whether we agree or not. Cause he's got something to say, Sir Walter Jones. Sir Walter Jones, he's got something to say, Sir Walter Jones. Sir Walter Jones, show. Come on in. The water's fine. Do 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 do. Hi. Hello, everybody. So Walter, so Walter Jones show. I'm here. It is the evening. Nope. Midday connection, baby. Come on in. The water's fine. Water's fine. Whole bunch of bunkers are already chiming in. Let's get this ball of cracker lacking. We're talking about forensic science, all right? Yesterday, I showed you all this Wikipedia page here, and we talked about forensic and criminalistics is the, uh, the, uh, the other name for it, is the application of science to criminal and civil law, mainly on the criminal side during criminal investigation as governed by the legal standards. The legal standards, the Jones had to break this down. The legal standards of admissible evidence. Admissible. Okay? Can y'all tell me what that means? Admissible evidence and criminal procedure. Forensic science is a broad field that includes DNA analysis, fingerprint analysis, blood stain pattern analysis, firearm examination and ballistics, tool mark analysis, uh, serology, toxology, Toxicology, that is, hair, fiber analysis, entomology, question documents, anthropology, uh, odontology, pathology, epidemiology, footwear and attire tread analysis, drug chemistry, paint and glass analysis, digital audio, video, and photo analysis. Man, man, if they don't find you by that time, you a ghost. <laughs> you have never been born. I mean, forensic science is absolutely brilliant. It is, it is, it is amazing to watch on a lot of your uh, crime shows. Elder Dr. Rodney L. Jones is here again on another sunny afternoon in Chicago. How you doing, brother? Hold on, I got to take you off mute. Yeah, that's better. Sorry. The Speaking. sun. He speaks. <laughs> He's speaking. Yeah, okay. The sun right. is gone. <laughs> and it's raining. <laughs> this, is, man, this, is a, this is an Asian movie. <laughs> 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 
Where I'm doing mean? well. And how about yourself? Man, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Doing the best I know how, whatever that means. All right. right. Uh, L. Jones interrogation. What is that? Interrogate. That's when you find out all of the details and you ask the basic questions. Who, what, when, where, why, how, and all of that. You interrogate. Uh, it's just like a journalist. Uh, you, you've studied journalism. A journalism writes with those questions in mind. An interrogator asks, uh, the purpose of the interrogator is to get answers. And the only way you're going to get answers is you've got to ask all the questions. So you got to have a sheet of paper with all of your questions that you're going to ask this individual. And you're going to interrogate. You're going to put them in a room and you're going to leave them in that room and you're going to come from every angle imaginable. Matter of fact, good cop, bad cop, your friend going to come in there and ask them because sometimes you miss a question. That's true. Then if somebody else going to come in there, they're going to offer you a cup of coffee. That's the good cop. <laughs> That's true. That's so true. <laughs> He's going to do what he got to do. Yes, the sir. key thing is interrogate him and get all of the information that you can because sometimes the person can't remember everything. Right. The interrogator has to... Uh, Ask questions in such a way to where it will bring some things to their memory. That's good. That that's good. I I, I like what perfectly said. Not uh, I think she's answered my question about admissible evidence. Uh, she mm -hmm. says not all evidence can be presented to the jury for decision. So it, yeah. it must it must be legal. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what we're seeing here. Good to see you, Doctor L. A name of Williams is here. Um, all right. It's good to see. It's good to examine uh, evidence that is admissible. There are things that the people, a, a bad teacher, will try to present something that's not textual, yeah, or something that is in the text but is used incorrectly. Yes. So that's that is unadmissible. <laughs> uh, and you know what I have to do as the pastor? Mm -hmm. What I have to ask the jury to strike that off the record. Mm. 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 Because there was some stuff that they threw in there simply because they studied all night. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. Oh, absolutely. And the, the jury will hear a, a, a an argument. And yes. the argument is, is incorrect or inadmissible or, or there was a I object and the objection yes. on the floor. Yes. And if the if the judge says objection Sustained or overruled? Yes, sustained mm -hmm. or overruled. If the, if mm -hmm. it's overruled, then he would tell them to, to strike that. Yeah, you know, from the record, but from, he can't strike it from their minds. Exactly. And, and so that, that student, come on, sir. That student goes home with the wrong information. Yes, and I believe this is why, when Jesus at one time was 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 uh, talking to a demon, he told them to shut up. Yeah. Because if you allow this demon to just keep talking in the room of, of weak folks, <laughs> that yeah. demon could have some kind of influence over mm -hmm. the house. And so sometimes you just got to just say, shut up. <laughs> Don't That's talk. Right. Get Walter. out. That's why Phil Donahue held the microphone himself. Sure did. Why? So Tell me why. He didn't have to say, other than this is a one-hour show, he didn't have to say, shut up. He just moved the mic. Pull so whatever mic. you're trying to say, can't be heard. Yeah. Once it goes out there, it's out there. Yeah. And let me ask you something, sir. How many pastors, and I'm a pastor, mm -hmm. how many pastors will stop the teacher from the erroneous teaching on the spot? Mm -hmm. Or do you call them in the office? Does mm -hmm. the pastor serve as a an attorney and judge by Holland? I object. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he should. the information. The information that this teacher just put on the floor was inaccurate or incorrect. Right. There was a lady that was teaching here one time, and she said, Peter cussed. He cussed like a sailor. I mean, I ain't never heard nobody cuss like that, right? So, you know, I did the soft thing and pulled her to the side after and let her know that the Bible never said he cussed. It said right. he cursed. Right. And I really wanted to know, how did you know that he cussed like a sailor when that action only took place <laughs> one time? <laughs> so how did you swell it up? How did you write a book? Whole book. A whole <laughs> about, book. About that's you. what we do. We write books about a subject matter that's inaccurate. Yeah. So yeah. I had to let him know Peter didn't cuss. He cursed. 
He right. placed a curse upon himself. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, there was a woman that came in our church. She, well, she was a member. She uh, she came from the back of the church up to the mic and wanted to testify on Sunday morning, which is unusual to do today. Mm -hmm. But it was allowed that day, and she had the nerve to say that she believed that, that Satan himself will be saved in the end time. Okay. All right, and you heard a gasp over the room. <laughs> <gasps> all right and she got excited amen amen and then she gave the mic back and danced back to the back bishop moody at the time who was alive he was sitting in the pulpit and i looked over at him and i said five four <laughs> three two one q moody q moody <laughs> he got right up immediately yeah. he had to he could not wait to after service so he objected he had to object right away. He says, uh, no, and now I need y'all to open up your Bible to the book of Revelation. And he, he took them there and read. <laughs> and they read it. <laughs> and then he laughed. <laughs> you know how Bishop Moody laughed. Yeah, he said, yeah, all right, yeah. I just want to make sure we clear the house. You know, it wasn't even his time to even preach yet. <laughs> it right. was just, they, the choir was still singing. You know, so <laughs> so your point is absolutely correct. You have to uh, sometimes, depending on what the assault of the word is, yes, something like that need to be quelled immediately. Mm -hmm. But then there's some things you say, okay, I'll, I'll wait to the end and pull them to the side. That might not be so conducive to the death of the house, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that that shepherd, because the shepherd has the guard, the mm -hmm. worship, the teaching, and the preaching, and everything over that house. That's true. Because he or she will be responsible for the actions that take place in that house. So if there's yeah. false teaching, wrong teaching, mm -hmm. the shepherd has to determine the urgency of this type of teaching. Do I pull the teacher in the room, let him know, and then uh, if it's going to be Sunday school, when, she, when they come back, that teacher can let the church know, blah, blah, blah. Or is this something like this individual said that the devil's going to be saved? This is something that I have to address now. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You got any notes? Let's see what you got. Yes, sir. All right. So let me start. Where you want me to start? Don't say the beginning. Okay, we'll start at the beginning. Now, let me deal with something. First, I want to deal with when you are doing what I call interrogate the text. As a forensic student, because every believer, every believer that's studying scripture ought to study with questions in your mind. Who, what, when, where, why? Number two, every believer that's reading the scripture need to do one thing. First thing you need to do is study your lesson, the text at hand. You don't have to go and do the history. You don't have to get a commentary. You don't have to define a word or anything like that. The first thing you wanna find yourself doing is reading the literature that's right in front of you. For instance, if there is an accident and someone had a shootout on the streets of wherever you live, and then uh, a person dies, let's say they die on the expressway, they're going to shut the expressway down. They're going to walk that entire section. They're going to rope that section off. They're going to ask all the questions. Then they're going to look for bullet shells. They're going to look for tire marks. They're going to glean all of the information they can from right there first before they open up that expressway. Once they get all of the details, they're going to open up the expressway. Then they're going to go and do what's called find eyewitnesses. The eyewitnesses may be taken to a room. They might have a lineup. The eyewitness has to give a bit by bit. You know how we do in testimony service. That's your time to give a bit by bit description of what took place that's the second half and then they're going to start putting everything together before they come together and make any type of arrests or whatever so when you're studying get the lesson that's that you're dealing with you don't have to go a chapter before you don't have to do a scripture before i'm going to show you how to glean from what's there so number one read what's there number two read only what's there Number three, glean from what you just read. Number four, if you didn't read it, it wasn't there. And if it ain't there, you can't teach it. Because mm -hmm. number five, whatever you teach 
is what they believe and what they believe is what they live. Mm -hmm. So how you approach it is how you're going to study it. All right. Let me switch over to let's do this segment here. This is called what am I going to call this? Where's my pen? There it is. We're going to call this a case of uh, a case study. OK, in this case study, I need to find out what's going on in this case study. This is what's called the Lord's Supper. All right. Because you all told me that I was unworthy to receive <laughs> the Lord's Supper. I can't take it because I'm unworthy. So now I need to find out. Here's remember this. Don't ask your friend. Don't ask your pastor. Don't ask your theologian. Ask the Bible. All of the questions. Consult with the Bible. So when you look at number one, what Bible should we be reading? Any Bible. Let me show you this. I'm going to tell you what I did. And that's a good question. A great question. I, I, yeah. I took yeah. this. This is a cheap Bible. Now I got hundreds of dollars worth of study Bible. I took a large print Bible because I didn't want to look at no notes, no commentary or nothing. I wanted to read strictly what's here. And then uh, I got pens, pencils, crayons, and I begin to color code everything myself. But let me go back to this. That was a very good question. Now, start asking yourself who, what, when, where, why. Don't ask nobody else. Ask what's here. So first of all, I'm reading. He says, when you come together, uh, therefore, into one place, this is to eat the Lord's Supper. First thing you want to do is observe what is obvious to you. You want to look for people. You want to look for places. You want to look for time. And it came to pass. It happened at midnight the next day. You want to look at that. Commands. Uh, don't do this. Do do that. People. Jesus was talking. Solomon was talking. Commands. What were they told to do? Uh, when you look at a jigsaw puzzle, some of you all are real smarter than me. Some of y'all start your jig puzzle from the center. I start my jig puzzle puzzle from the edge. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, because it's obvious. Put the edges together and then build the rest of your puzzles based on what you can see with the eye. All right. What is it that I see? First thing I see is that my screen went black. Second thing I see is my photo right there. <laughs> and then third thing I see is right there. Now, I understand that I'm right here in 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, verses 20. Who the author is, I don't know. I'm going to find out later. That's the question that I'm going to find out later. Find out all the detail that you can find. So he says, when you come together into one place, that is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper. One is hungry and another is drunken. So the first thing I understand and what I see is right here is that there's a group of people reading the mic, up. Doc. Oh, sorry. First thing, sorry, uh, Doc. <laughs> first thing, first thing I noticed. What's up, Doc? Ah, <laughs> uh, what's up, Doc? John? <laughs> first thing I noticed. Uh, I hope. Can y'all still see that? If I do that. Yep. Okay. Good. First thing I noticed is that there's a group of people that's coming together. He said, when ye, 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 not necessarily you. When you come together, second thing I understand is they're coming together in one place. Mm -hmm. So that's the second thing. Then he says, this is not to eat. So whatever's, dealing, whatever's going on has something to do with food. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then he mentions that this is not to eat the Lord's Supper, which I already know, but that this is dealing with the Lord's Supper. So number one, there's a group of people that's coming together. Number two, they're coming together in one place. Number three, they're coming together to eat. Number four, they're coming together to eat what's called the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. Right off the bat. What's wrong with that? Nothing. But then we understand here, he says, for eating. Now, I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to show you this. Watch this. I'm going to mark every time, Sir Walter, he mentions food. He says, eat right here. He mentions that somebody is hungry right here. Mm -hmm. Then he says, eat here. Uh-huh. Uh, I want everybody else to find the word eat. Show me where else that you can find the word eat. He mentions bread right here. Uh, thanks. He broke it. He says, take and eat. There's the word eat right there. I'm going to keep on moving up. Watch this. 
as often as ye drink, okay, often as ye eat. There's another word for eat right here. Look at verse 27. The word is eat right here. What am I doing? I'm finding a word that keeps repeating itself. The word is eat right here. Why does this word continue to repeat? The word is eat right here. So now I know right off the bat, ladies and gentlemen, that this whole thing has something to do with eating. Yes, sir. Number two, it tells me that apparently it has something to do with the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. But now, what is the problem? You want me to stop right there, sir? Or nope. you want me to keep going? Keep going. Keep going. Okay. So here, verse number two, he says, In eating, everyone taketh here, right here. Now, this might be a problem. Everybody takes his own supper. And they're doing this, ladies and gentlemen, during what's called the Lord's Supper. So mm. is that right? Huh? I said, mm. Mm hmm Now, they're doing this during what's called the Lord's Supper. They're bringing, but they're taking their own supper, which eating your own supper is fine. But the problem is somebody is hungry. Mm hmm Problem number two, and others are drunk. Mm -hmm. So now we're finding that there is a problem. We're finding why the writer is writing this. Then he says, uh, don't you have, verse 27 right here, he says, don't you have houses to eat and to drink in or despise the church of God? So apparently what they're doing was despising God's house. What was it? Because somebody was getting hungry and somebody was getting drunk because they was bringing their own food. But bringing your own food is not the problem. Apparently, they were not sharing the food. Mm -hmm. We're getting ready to find another problem. When you look at verse 23, he says, Now I received of the Lord, which I delivered unto you, that the, the Lord, the same night in which he was betrayed. Watch what Jesus did. Now this is called, ladies and gentlemen, an example. Tell me if I spelled it right. Mm -hmm. Okay, praise God. All right. <laughs> but you asked the wrong guy, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm horrible with spelling. <laughs> yes, sir. Let me put it over there. Example. <laughs> you, you typed. I thought I was bad. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I, I have overcome. <laughs> <laughs> the proof is in the pudding. So right here, he gives them an example. Now, let me pull this up right here. Ladies and gentlemen, always remember when you're reading scripture, pay close and strict attention to what the writer is saying. Number one, identify the writer later. Yeah. Number two, identify the type of literature that you're reading. It's important that you know what book you're reading from. If I'm reading from Deuteronomy, it may or may not be pertaining to me. It yep. may be pertaining to the Jew only. Because one passage of scripture said that when you enter into the promised land, which means anything I read from this point on has nothing to do with me. I'm reading nice. somebody else's mail. Yep. Call the police. Yep. It's a federal offense. You have a right to remain silent. Mm. Mm. If it's reading in the book of the proverb or in the book of, of whatever, you need to know because you need to know if this is, and my dad's favorite word, if this is applicable to me or not. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's get back to this, and I'm closing. Yeah, that's my first close. He <laughs> says, and number one, this is an example. When Jesus, he took bread. Number two, what he did, what it, after he broke it, he said, take and eat. That means he shared the bread and the wine. Mm. So now, as Paul is using this as an example, this tells me that what the people were doing was the opposite of what Paul was trying to demonstrate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's trying to show them how to receive the Lord's Supper. And then he's, now I'm going to jump down to verse 26. He says, for as often as you eat this bread, drink this bread, and drink this cup, you show forth my... So right here, he tells us one of the purposes of the Lord's Supper. Right there. You found the purpose. I know we want to create a lot of purposes, but that is not what it was for. Uh, now, here's where we get in trouble, Sir Walter. Mm -hmm. Right here. Verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever eat... There's that word again. This bread... And drink the cup of the Lord. Here is our first dilemma right here. Unworthy. That word unworthy. Now, I don't know what that means. So I'm not going to check it out yet. I'm not through 
interrogating the text. There you go. Remember, your next, your first witness, my brothers and sisters, your first witness after you have interrogated the text, you now got to call a witness to the stand. Yes, sir. And it has to be an eyewitness. Come on, man. Your eyewitness is called a dictionary. Yes, sir. And the reason I say that is because you're going to find some words that you can't understand. Mm -hmm. And that dictionary is going to cause you to understand that word in the day that it was written. One of the problems we do is we study scripture in the lens of our culture. Study mm -hmm. the scripture in the lens of the culture that it was written in and use a Bible dictionary, a Bible encyclopedia to define the word according to its original text. Yes, so sir. your first um, uh, what I call it again, your first witness is going to be a dictionary. Your second witness would be an encyclopedia. Your third witness would be a history book that can give you the history of what's going on or a background of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Your fifth witness would be a customs and manners book, which can tell you that this was a custom or this was a manner either of the Jew or of the land. Your last witness would be a commentary. Mm hmm. Commentary is always your last witness. And if you're going to look at a commentary, make sure that the commentator lines up with what you just discovered. And don't just go by what the commentator says because they're a commentator. And sometimes the commentator can give you some history that you didn't know or other scriptural references to what you're trying to read. So one of your witnesses could be a multi-translation Bible the New Living Translation, the New International Version, the American, what is that called? The Amplified Version or the Amplified Version Updated. And the purpose of using those is you're, get, you're putting them in what's called a lineup. You're lining yeah. them fellas up and you're trying to determine from them, uh, you understand what I'm saying. Yep, I All do. Right? Now, now, let me go back to this and then I'm going to shut it down. So the first word, that we're going to identify later, not right now, is that, okay? Then, I'm gonna keep reading right here. He says, let a man examine himself, okay? Now, I got to find out what does that mean, but I'm not getting ready to take it right now because I got a problem with all y'all that's watching because y'all told me I couldn't take it because I had sinned the night before. But look at what he said. Let a man examine himself and so let, let him do what? Let him eat and let him drink. How is it that y'all won't let me eat or drink? Because you are communion cops. But <laughs> <laughs> you are under arrest. You have a right to keep your mouth shut. You cannot drink this body because you cops. stand that night. So walk, guess what we're getting ready to find out? What's that? Come back to the screen, sir. All right. <laughs> Let me see if I know how. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> We're getting ready to find out something. That sin was committed. Okay, there was a sin that took place, but we're getting ready to find out when did the sin take place, mm. and what was the sin that took place. The sin of the people who wants to take the communion. Yes. Because mm -hmm. remember, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, if a person comes in, and I'm going to show you how people are prejudiced. We won't let a drunk take the Lord's Supper. But we'll give it to a newborn baby or a baby that's two years old who don't have a clue what this is. Right. Ain't yeah. no difference in the two. Yeah. At least a drunk knows in many cases. Yeah, Sometimes they won't take it, but that yeah. drunk knows what that is. That yeah. child don't. Yeah, he was a former pastor. <laughs> He's yeah, that drunk is a former pastor. Yeah, just couldn't come up with the reports. <laughs> hey, the inflation. So we can ready to find out that <laughs> sin was committed, but we need to find out what sin it was mm -hmm. and when was it committed. I, I believe you. What is it called when a man dies of his own uh, involuntary mass? What are those different types of uh, deaths? Uh, manslaughter, is, involuntary manslaughter. Yeah, and homicide. What homicide, is that? Homicide. Yeah. What is that? Explain that. I, I, you you've been killed by somebody. <laughs> killed by somebody. 
is homicide okay. and they have levels and degrees of it. Yes. So in other words, they see a dead man. Yeah. They got to find out what killed him, how did he die, or, or at what point he died. And then when they gather all the information, if they see a knife hole, now it switches from natural death to homicide. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because something is in there that let them know that this was homicide. We're getting ready to read here right now. We're getting ready to find out, number one, sin was committed. But we're getting ready to find out when was it committed and how was it committed. Yeah. See, the how is important because in the court of law, the how will determine uh, the intent and it will determine the punishment, too. Uh, exactly. Because they have what's called, you know, first degree murder, second degree murder, you mm -hmm. know, uh, or murder or they'll say murder one. All mm -hmm. right. You intended to do that. You you premeditated meditated. And the premeditation doesn't mean 24 hours, 40 hours. Premeditation wow. could have been just a few minutes. Just a few <laughs> minutes ago. Yeah. 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 So that's what we got to figure out. So, all right, you can leave the screen, sir. Why are you still there? Yeah, my bad. Go get your cup of water and coffee. <laughs> I'm sorry. So let's, let's get back to this. So we got, he said that if you do this and drink this cup unworthily, you are guilty of his blood, okay, of the Lord. He says, but, but is key that we never look at, okay? But let a man examine himself. In other words, let a man himself examine. Mm. He's not examining himself to see if he committed sin. So this examine here does not have anything to do with sin. Because I'm getting ready to show you that the sin of the people didn't take place outside, but it took place inside. Uh oh, it's I'm, an inside job. <laughs> it's an inside job. Yes, sir. And I'm gonna tell you when the sin took place. You wanna know when sin took place? When's that? When they came together. Uh uh uh. Mm, mm, mm. See that? Mm, mm, mm. When they came together. Yeah. Mm. That's when the sin, so it had nothing to do with somebody sleeping with somebody the night before. True. The sin took place when they came together. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, let's go on down. For, uh, he says, but let a man examine himself uh, and let him eat and blah, blah. Look at verse number 29. For in eating, uh, for he that eateth and drinketh, here's another word. There's that word unworthily he eateth and drinketh damnation to himself now this is what people don't understand why paul gives the reason why he uses unworthily and a man examine himself because he said that this person is not discerning that this is the lord's body here it is so the sin took place while taking the lord's supper because they were abusing it why do you know that they were abusing it because he said here that somebody was hungry and somebody was drunk. Right there. Yeah. And he says what they was doing was they was despising the church of God because they were not they were not coming together to eat the Lord's Supper, although it was the purpose for coming together, which was to eat the Lord's Supper. What they was doing was each man would bring his own food yep. or his own drink, and the person who could not afford it couldn't take the Lord's Supper. That's You're right. going to find That's out right. when you leave this and read others uh, prior to this, you'll find out that they were having the Lord's Supper every day. Yep, that's right. But it's interesting, Paul didn't jump on them for receiving the Lord's Supper every day. Sure didn't, that's right. The first century church, they met every yeah. day in the homes every and they had communion. The so right. it's not a sin to receive the Lord's Supper every day and all right. day. It that's is right. not a sin. He said, as often as you do this, yes. you show forth. The word okay. show means to declare. It means to make known. It means to publicize. It means to preach. It means to make an open declaration. Mm -hmm. So every time we partake of it, we're making an open declaration of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let right. me close this book. Now, he says, for this cause, verse 30, many are sickly, right? Mm -hmm. And many sleep. Sir Walter, notice what he didn't use. He didn't say dead. Mm. He said sleep. Yeah. Because the person was still saved. Mm. 
Because saints don't die. They mm. sleep. That's right. Now, first thing we need to know is this word unworthily right here. And I'm going to close it in. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I didn't know that they can do that. Let me try to write it up. Yeah, nice toys, isn't it beautiful? Oh, Yay! Oh. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules! <laughs> that looked just like me, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, now watch this. First word you want to look at. It's now time to define this word. Let's look at that word right there. The word is unworthily, okay? Here is your first witness. Right there. Um, sorry, sir. This is your show. I can, I can miss You can up. mess up. Yeah, it's okay. Because I would have put three T's up there. <laughs> yeah, I, I did, but one of my T's was sleep. <laughs> the first word is unworthily. That's the word you want to define. And you look at the last meaning. It says treating it as a common meal. Mm. To treat the Lord's Supper as a common meal. So unworthy is not the word. The word is unworthily, which means that they're doing it in an irreverent way. Yes, sir. They were not uh, receiving the Lord's Supper as it was the Lord's Supper. They was doing like some of us do, treating it like it was Welch's group uh, juice and unsalting crackers. <laughs> That's why I said your baby don't have a clue that this is the Lord's Supper. That's right. And if we got communion cops, you need to be arrested too if you give it to your three-year-old baby who don't have no understanding that this is the Lord's body. Mm. So number one, your first witness is right here. Uh, let me put it right here, and then I'm, I'm going to close. That's your first witness. Uh, your dictionary, I'm sorry. So the first word is irre un unworthily. Then he says, watch this, Sir Walter. He said, let a man examine himself. That word examine means to test or to discern. Okay? To discern, to approve, or even to decide. What is it that you got to examine? Not if you sin or not. You've got to examine if you understand that this is the Lord's body. Yes, sir. Because he said that they were not discerning that this was the Lord's body. Mm -hmm. Watch this, sir. This word right here and that word right here. You see that word? Let me change this color. You see that word discern? Mm -hmm. Guess where else you see it? Mm -hmm. Right there. Which means to discern and to examine really mean the same thing. Yeah. Let a man discern. Let a man test his own knowledge to see if he can understand or see if he knows that what he is partaking is the Lord's body. Mm -hmm. So discern to uh, examine. And then lastly, he says the problem was they were not discerning that this was the Lord's body, which means to separate, to discern, to decide, or even to judge. That's what I want to stop right there. I'm not going to go no further with that. So number one, we find out that the Apostle Paul was writing to uh, this writer was writing to a group of individuals. Number two, they were coming together in one place. Number three, we find out that they were eating and drinking in one place. Number four, the purpose of them coming together was for the Lord's body. Number five, the problem was they were being selfish because he said one was getting drunk, one was getting full, and the other was not. Right. Number six, we understand that they was bringing the house of God to a shame. Number seven, are you are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. And this is how your scientist or the police sergeant, remember, when there's a crime committed, he come to the microphone before mm -hmm. the press. Mm -hmm. They've gathered all the facts. Mm -hmm. And notice, I can do this now without even looking at my notes. Yeah. Because I've just placed it in my head. So the person is not unworthy, the, the style or his belief or his understanding that this is the Lord's Supper causes him to take it in an unworthy manner. Yeah. So the sin is not the person. The sin took place when they came together and they abused the Lord's Supper. That's good. And you, Last, you should, go no, ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to save her. I'm going to save her. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. One person, a, a few women asked me this question. 
uh, when I taught this lesson. They said, so let me get this straight. So you said anybody can take the Lord's Supper, and I got a little indignant. I didn't show it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because I just showed you what the scripture said, and you're still asking me questions. Don't ask Creflo Dollar a question. Ask the Bible the question. Yep. Yep. Don't ask me, what do I think? Ask the Bible, yeah. what is his purpose for writing this? All right, this okay. That's good. That's why science is so important. God created it this way. I'm omniscient, or I'm not science. That's who he is. Mm -hmm. If you ask the science the question, the science will give you the answer. Correct. All right. I can't understand how someone goes against global warming when the answer is there. Yeah. It's they do tests and carbon tests and DNA tests and the science is is actually like wisdom the Bible mm -hmm. says is screaming from the streets, the streets. Mm -hmm. Wisdom was there at the very beginning when God yes. before God created the heaven and the earth, wisdom said I was there. I was there. And you know what it's called? What? It's called architect. Wisdom yes. was the architect that yes, God Yes sir. Used. There you go. So yeah. the so the answer is there when God created the, the earth, he put his signature like a art, an artist does, mm -hmm. a Rembrandt, his mm -hmm. name is there at the bottom of the of the of the painting. He signs it. <laughs> yeah, he signs it. And so this is I think this is why the, the Bible says that it is the honor of kings. Uh-huh. Well, God, it, it, is, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. Conceal a matter, uh-huh. And it's the honor of kings to search it out <laughs> or dig it yeah. out. I believe that's why us scientists have discovered God, but they're rejecting the science. And there are more, um, um, let's, let's get another example, and it might be kind of off the top. There were some scientists that tried to prove that there was no God. Right. And I'm, I'm, I have a scientific question mind. I'm not saying I'm a science. I have a mind that I like, I like to know. And when I read that um, um, Jerusalem was told to march around Jericho one time, yeah, that, that, that bothered me because I wanted to know why one time, six days. Mm -hmm. And so when I multiply us, uh, uh, to go around something one time is to make it 360 degree. Mm-hmm. When you multiply it times six, you come out with, I think, maybe 2160 or something like that. That's, that, that's the answer, if that's mm -hmm. the answer. Mm -hmm. Number two, Jericho was called the city of the moon. Mm -hmm. They worshiped the moon. They did. Number three, the moon in its circumference was that exact same number. Mm -hmm. That's good. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when now it may not do me no good, you no good. But it's gonna get them scientists. It's gonna do you and me some good because we're philosophers. <laughs> we're philosophers, right? Because we like to know why. Yeah. But, but when that, then when that scientist do that math to try to prove that there ain't no God, he gonna see that this God is so wise that he knew that we was gonna search this matter. He knew that Jericho was was worship the moon, and he knew that we're gonna figure out that the circumference of the moon is the same distance or whatever of the amount of time that they travel. That's God. And this is why the word confounds the wise. Yes. This God uses practical and typical science to th uh, throw wise men off. I mean, it, it drives them crazy, so they have to come up with a theory. A man's theory. To Did you prove. say the wise men's? Wise men? Oh, wise men. Oh, I wise thought you said men. the wise men. Okay, it's, it. it's the Invisalign. Okay. <laughs> 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 so he, he says things to, to throw them off. And so instead of them giving God the credit, they will come up with a theory like b a Big Bang. Big Bang, yeah. They have to say that because... We we have to dispel the fact that there is a God. So so something came from nothing. We mm -hmm. have to call it something. I personally believe that the wall of Jericho came down for for the reason that you said. Yeah. And for the reasons of uh, the science behind resonance, everything yes. has a resonating point, and that's why God told them to scream, to shout. Yeah. Because yes. I call it the elephant's journal. 
Yeah, a certain pitch. It's the Ella Fitzgerald effect because that yeah. commercial was the glass and, and she went beep, 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 beep. Okay, when she hit a when she hit a certain note, that glass. <laughs> when, <you're doing> <laughs> when she hit a certain note, <laughs> suffering, suffering <tash. laughs> When she hit a certain note, <laughs> that glass shattered. Yeah. <laughs> but why did the glass shatter, but nothing else in the house shattered? Because everything breaks at a certain pitch. Come on, it's a resonating point. All right, and, and so, and your, so, including your spouse, your yeah, husband, your wife, yeah. your kid. Come your on, pastor. come we on. We all got that certain pitch. We do have a pitch. God put a yeah. pitch in us. That's why Man. when you hear, <laughs> when you hear cars going down the street and you hear boo, 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 yeah, <laughs> your heart. Some people have heart attacks because it's like boo. <laughs> Yes, sir. Your, your friend, Mr. Clean, told Twinkie, don't hit that note, Twinkie. Don't hit, you know, the note that I like. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Even church people, you play a certain chord structure, we're going to all jump up again. Yep. That's it. It's the sound. It's not, yeah, it's a, that's, that's sound. right. It's the sound, and it's a it's a frequency point like this, the middle C is 440 hertz. So it's hertz, yeah. it's frequencies. It's resonation and all this stuff I had to learn when I went to school for uh, music um, uh, engineering. I had to learn all these resonating points to help me to be able to mix a song. All right, because it has certain points. Yes. Um, you have to, you can use your naked ear, but sometimes you have to use the equipment because yes, the equipment was solid. Like your oven, an electric oven sets the temperature at 350. You know. Mm -hmm. It knows it's 350. It's 350. Because there's a thermometer in there and it knows. It knows. Yeah, yeah. now, so the FBI, mm -hmm. they have studied you like you just studied this 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 chapter. Where were you? First Corinthians, what, 11? 11, uh-huh. The way you painstakingly interrogated the text the way you did. <laughs> it took a lot of pain. <laughs> yeah, I know it took pain. All I right. don't have pain. <laughs> It might have taken you a little while to do that, but once you did it, then you went public. Mm -hmm. That's the FBI. Yes. Because if they said if the FBI knock on your door, they have been following you. Mm -hmm. Could have been for years. Yes, sir. Why? When they because, finally approach you. Yes, sir. They didn't put everything together. They've been and, building a case. And that's how Bible study should be. When, when we're studying, now you can't really see this, but these are notes. What, what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say is, as you're studying, before you reach any other source, put everything together. Yeah. Before you teach it, yeah. interrogate the text first. I got another case study here. I look at what, you remember your Uncle Nathan. Uncle Nathan said, I heard what you didn't say. Yeah, yeah. So they said this woman was caught in the very uh, act of adultery. Mm -hmm. What they didn't say is we caught her. That's true. Yeah. That's number one. Yeah. And and then it it it, it just the, the list goes on. So I think what's important for us is as we interrogate, only look at the text that it. So what you got three verses? Look at those three verses. Many of the Christians are lazy, Sir Walter, mm -hmm. because we read it one time. I asked the question, there are 168 hours in a week. How many hours do you use to study? Out of 168 hours. And if any person says anything less than seven hours and they are a Sunday school teacher or whatever, shame on you. Yes. Because by the time you reach that podium or that classroom, you should have a minimum of seven to eight hours under your belt of study. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, that's good. So let's talk about the silence part. You brought up a good point mm -hmm. uh, because we talked about the law of silence, uh, the, the theology of silence. Uh, when you when the Bible is mute, uh, most times I'm mute. But there's sometimes the Bible allows you to read between the line mm -hmm. or what it doesn't say. Mm -hmm. But it is in what's the word implied implied. There's some implications yeah. going on there outside Perfect. of the ambiguity part. There's some, there's some things that have been implied. You brought yeah. up the woman who was brought to Jesus. Now, a good defense lawyer mm -hmm. would take that and really, really uh, analyze it and can win that case like Jesus did. He was a great lawyer. Yes, because, sir. 
because because so help me with that story there because mm -hmm. because we look at the surface the jury yeah. only could see the surface of what we right. see in the text Correct. a good lawyer can see further into that because the lawyer know the law mm -hmm. were there laws broken there yes I can show you if you want me to switch over. I can do yep. this in less than three. I'm gonna solo minutes. you. Okay, all right, and I'm gonna go right into it. Uh, Lord, that's Sir Walter something else. I give by that man. Um, oh, I can't see this. Coca Cola. <laughs> oh, Coca Cola. I drink Coca. So number one, <laughs> we see here we're in John the eighth chapter, verses number one. This case study, my ladies and gentlemen, is the woman that was caught in adultery. We're going to see if they lied about it and mm -hmm. what was taking place, what happened. Mm -hmm. Number one, it says Jesus went up into Mount Olive. So that's the first thing we understand uh, is Jesus is on board. Second thing, we understand that he went somewhere. The third thing we look at is he's in Mount Olive. Sounds like one thing, but if you ever get arrested or pulled over for running red light, you're probably going to get two tickets. Ticket yeah. number one is failure to apply a, right. abide by the law. That's ticket right. number two is because you ran the light. That's two <laughs> tickets. Yep. So here's three things. Number three one, tickets. The things. third ticket is for your ignorance. Because <laughs> <laughs> ignorance is no excuse of the law. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the fourth one is because you got green and I wouldn't be seen wearing green. <laughs> Come on, brother. <laughs> so, so we see three things that we got Jesus on the scene. We see that Jesus is going somewhere. Now, what we don't know is where he came from. Not yes. important at this moment. We right. will find that out later. That's right. something you write down and figure it out later, mm -hmm. where he's coming from. Number two, you don't know is why he was going there. Yet, here you see, I hear, uh, oh, wait a minute. Is this me? I hear. Um, I don't hear an echo. Yeah. You're good. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, so we see he's at Mount Olive. Now, look at the time. Always look at time, location. Something took place early, early in the morning. In the morning. Mm -hmm. What happened? Now, I, let me move this out the way. Let me move that. Watch, watch this. He came early in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, the question is, who came early in the morning? And your answer is he. Who is he? You automatically know he is Jesus. You see how you're putting that together? Yes, sir. So Jesus came early in the morning. Now we understand that not only is he in Mount Olive, but he's now in the temple. That's right. Then we see all the people came unto him. Uh, so we see a lot of people. We see that they were coming to him. We see two more things about Jesus. He sat and he talked. So now we know we're dealing with Jesus. We know that he went somewhere. We know he went to Mount Olive. We know something took place in the morning. He came. He went in the temple. We see that he was sitting. The purpose for him being in there is he sat down to talk. Now, while he's doing this, these guys right here, the scribes. <laughs> the scribes. <laughs> the scribes and the parasites. <laughs> read, sir, read. Now, watch this. Now, the writer, you have to see this. The writer said that they brought a woman. Okay? Key word is here. The writer yes. said that they brought a woman, taken in adultery, and they set her in the midst. They said unto him, now they called him master. Now, watch what they said. This woman was taken in adultery. Now, when you see repeated words, you mark it repeated words. Bam, bam. Adultery, adultery. So, yes, she was taken in adultery. But what they did not say, Sir Walter Jones, is they caught her. Mm -hmm. They That's said true. this woman was taken in adultery, heaven's yes. murgatory, in the very act. Now, watch this. They're going to bring in the law. Yep. Now, here's mistake number one. You see that word, us? Yeah. Moses, they said, commanded us what to do with this woman. She should be stoned. Right off the bat, you know a law was broken. Why? Because she was not stoned. That's true. Right off the... the oh, sorry with the S, sorry. She was not stoned. Right. So they broke a law. Right. That made all of them guilty. Yep. Number two, they was doing this to tempt him. Yep. You don't tempt the Lord thy God. 
that made them guilty as well because their intentions was not about the woman. Their intentions was not to follow the law. Right. Their intentions was to trap Jesus. That's right. So, and they didn't, and here, but the Bible said that they might accuse him. So here's where we get in trouble, Sir Walter, right here. Let me ask you a question, Sir Walter. Mm -hmm. Why do y'all mess, uh, spend so much time figuring out what Jesus wrote? Right. When it ain't important. You know why it's not important? Because the scripture don't tell us what he wrote. Right. So I'm not going to spend a 20 minute sermon on what he possibly could. I'm going to keep on going when he says this right here. Here's the passage of scripture that we always mess up. We always say he is without sin. Let him cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, first of all, he that is without sin. Watch what he says among you. Mm. We don't see that. And then he didn't say, let him cast the first stone. He says, let him first. Mm -hmm. cast a stone at her let him first because the witness had to be the first uh -oh, to cast a stone not cast the first stone the witness was the first one to cast a stone when you see that nobody throws a stone that means that there were no witnesses yep you see what I'm saying I do so he says let him without sin among you. Why would he say that, Sir Walter? Because Jesus was without sin. Mm. But there's still one more problem. Why didn't Jesus cast a stone at her? Because he was not an eyewitness. Mm. <laughs> He's the son of God. Yep. He knows everything. But he was not an eyewitness. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, watch this. I'm getting ready to show you. Uh, I'm going to go to, when I got to, I figured that all out, right? I'm doing this for time's sake. I'm going to go to the law. Here it is right here. In the book of Deuteronomy. Yeah, that do that thing. Do that thing. If a man be found lying, and he ain't talking about not telling the truth, um, with a woman uh, married to a husband, then they both shall die. Mm. The man that lay with her and the woman, uh, look at verse, uh, chapter 17 and 6. Watch this. At the mouth of how many witnesses? Two or three. Shall he that is worthy of death. Now, the person that did this is worthy of death. But when the fact that more than one didn't throw a stone, that means that they were not our witnesses. Because he says at the mouth of two or three witnesses uh, shall every word be uh, shut shall he that is worthy of death be put to death uh but at the mouth of one or of one he shall not be put to death here's the verse seven last one the hands of the witness shall be the first one upon him to put him to death and then afterwards everybody else you can come back on the screen so what we noticed and what we saw is that the woman was in adultery number two she was caught in adultery number three the people who brought Jesus there broke the law because they didn't stone her number one right. number two their purpose was to tempt her number three when Jesus says he that is without sin among you number four Jesus was without sin but he could not throw the stone because although he was God he was not an eyewitness as to whether this took place or not he knew whether it was right or wrong then he says, let him first cast the stone. Since there was no witness, nobody threw the stone at her. So that's how you interrogate the text. Before you look anywhere else, find out all of the information, every detail and everything. Then go find your eyewitnesses. Then go find your eyewitnesses. See, th that that's how you interrogate the scripture. Mm -hmm. That's how good lawyers do it. And if I was to even go further in the law, like the Constitution, and find maybe some loophole. Mm -hmm. You can find it. Yeah. My fact, right here, when Jesus read on, wrote, wrote on the ground, you says you don't know what he wrote. Correct. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he wrote. We, it's assumed mm -hmm. what he wrote. Mm -hmm. There's a clue. Like good lawyers find nice clues in the law or in the Constitution. 
Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 17 and 13 gives us a clue because Jesus did a lot of things. Yes. Based on the old, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Look what it says here. Mm -hmm. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written <laughs> in the earth. <laughs> in the earth. <laughs> <laughs> because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living uh -huh. water. You see what I'm saying? A yes, good sir. lawyer can unpack that. Unpack it. In the midst of a of a uh, easily persuaded uh, jury, mm -hmm. if the glove don't fit. <laughs> You must, you must quit. Uh, quit. <laughs> quit. Okay. That's that's this is good interrogation here. Now, Jones, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna need you to interrogate this brother here. I know we're already an hour in, but I, I had this already clued up. And since I am the boss. You're the boss. Yeah, it pays the cost. It pays to be the king. Yeah, it pay, pays to be the king. I want you to interrogate Pastor Michael Todd. Okay. All right. I like this brother here, not Pastor Michael Todd per se, but this brother here, Mike uh, Henry and uh, and Monic TV. I think that's his name. All right, I'm 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 liking the way he 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 break things down. So I, I'm go ahead and subscribe to his channel. But here you're gonna hear Michael Todd say something, and I need you to examine what he's saying. What do you call this? Pastor Michael Todd of Transformation Church said people don't go to hell for sin watch this god was in christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing and that word means accounting not not accounting their sins or trespasses against them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation god didn't do it just for us he did it for the entire world but pastor everybody's not going to heaven correct because god gave everybody choice i'm about to drop some knowledge on you that 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 everybody has to be able to receive now stop mm -hmm. whenever a preacher say i'm getting ready to drop some serious knowledge in a big bomb mm -hmm. he either getting ready to really mess up <laughs> I mean, he getting ready to, I mean, it's going to be a big heresy drop, <laughs> okay? Uh, or he might say something intriguing, but if you got a room full of Bible uh, believers, it shouldn't be that, you know. You that said it shouldn't. It, it shouldn't be such a big bomb okay. drop. Yeah. But the when song it's. Says, the song says it shouldn't be. At the church too. Yeah, remember, the right? Song. Exactly. So if the bomb did drop in that whole house, mm -hmm. that means it's like a teacher where ninety-five percent of the students are failing. Yes, you blame the teacher. You sure do. All right, here we go. And this may be a shocking statement for some people, but people don't go to hell for sin. Jesus already paid for that. They go to hell for unbelief. And he died for the entire world. So people don't go to hell for, 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 for sin. Michael Todd believes. Okay. People and then he, 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 he begins to examine Michael Todd. All right. Here's the problem with his statement. Mm -hmm. It's very misleading. Yes, of course. It's extremely misleading. Can mm -hmm. you tell me as a lawyer? Yes. Why is it misleading? Because unbelief is sin. Mm. He says people so, don't go to hell because of sin. Mm -hmm. They go to hell because of unbelief. Mm -hmm. And unbelief is sin. So when he's saying the same it, thing. Pretty much. He's saying the same thing, but he lied. <laughs> he's trying to make a principle. Yeah. And our problem is well, we principalize everything. So that was their bomb. Usually a bomb is a principle. It's a principle that somebody's getting ready to make. A statement. And a lot of times... It's in, in it, it is inaccurate, first yeah. of all. Number two, when Paul said, or Peter said, that he gave us the ministry of reconciliation, my question after interrogating the text is, is this ministry of re reconciliation for everybody that preaches it, or was it specifically given to the first church or Peter or Paul? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at the book of Romans, the first chapter, and Romans, the second chapter, there's a situation. 
the first chapter uh uh no i won't deal with that i won't deal with that right now uh unbelief that's a whole show by itself yeah yeah i won't i won't deal with that but i'm about to walk into some yeah, you man don't do it don't do it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I project the alligator and the allegory <laughs> walk away from it <laughs> so, yeah yeah so unbelief yes yes unbelief is still sin jesus you know the biggest problem that jesus had with the book in the book of john they mm -hmm. didn't believe in him they didn't he kept saying, if any man believe, if you, if you don't believe in me, you won't believe in my father. If you believe in me, you believe in my father. The biggest problem with the Pharisees was their unbelief. Yeah. Now, there's two types. One is when they rejected him. That means you, you, you know what he is, mm -hmm. but you reject him. With rejection is willful. Mm -hmm. But unbelief is sin. Yeah. yeah unbelief is, is sin. sin. No, but that's good. Now, I've got three verses to bring in to prove it because... He is, he is correct, com depending on who's listening. Mm -hmm. He is a he, but he said a damnable thing, depending on everybody else. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right, okay, right here. Look at um, uh, Hebrews chapter ten, mm -hmm. twenty six verse says, "Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning, after mm -hmm. we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins." Mm -hmm. All right. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies for anyone who refused to obey the law of, of Moses was put to death without mercy on the mm. testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think how much more or worse the punishment would be for those who have uh, trampled on the son of God and have mm. treated the blood of the covenant, which made us holy as if it were common and holy and have insulted the disdained and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings mm -hmm. God's mercy to us. For we know and what it when it's and I like the way it does this. For we know the one who said the New Testament loves to revert back to what? <laughs> mm -hmm. Always go back. So when Jesus is speaking, he already spoke. He's just reiterating his words. So right here, Jude 1 and 14 says this Enoch who lived in the seventh generation of after Adam prophesied about these things he said listen the Lord is coming with countless thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on the people of the world he will convict every person of all the ungodly things that they have done mm -hmm. and all for the and for the uh, all the insults that ungodly sinners have mm -hmm. spoken against him sinners but the mm -hmm. one l jones that i think is the most damaging to his statement is the book of revelations chapter 21 and verse 8 is the most damaging because here where i says he is correct if he if he stopped reading mm -hmm. but cowards and unbelievers if he had stopped there <laughs> right he's correct mm -hmm. but this tells me that it's not just unbelievers mm-hmm but it's also sinners, corrupt, yeah. murderers, corrupt, murderers <laughs> more, immoral, witchcraft, witchcraft, <laughs> idolaters, liars, uh, liars, uh huh, all liars. Their fate is in the, the fire, fire, fiery lake of the burning sulfur. Y'all, y'all know this is NLT. Yeah. This is the second death. Okay, second. so with all this being said, the Lucifer, Satan, and all his imps believe. Mm hmm. Yeah, they all believe because they know. Yeah, but they can't make it in because there's no hope for them. They all believe. And what they want to do is make us be one thing, and mm -hmm. that's an unbeliever. Yep. That's mm -hmm. what the devil wants. Yes. He don't care about COVID. He don't care about sickness. He don't care about death. The devil don't care about your house. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be an unbeliever and die. Yes. As an mm -hmm. unbeliever. God, mm -hmm. that's why he said it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. Yeah. You either are a believer or a non-believer. Yeah. Period. That's the And anybody period. that doesn't believe is an unbeliever. Yeah. That's why he got upset with the children of Israel. Yeah. You saw my works. Mm -hmm. he, you saw how I lifted you like an eagle or something like that. I walked with you as a husband walks with his wife. I carried you and all that, and you still don't believe. Still don't believe. Yeah. Man, I tell you, 
uh, there's a couple comments that I wanted that I did save. Let's see, we missed out on so many so many communions for lack of knowledge because of a wrong teaching. She says, "Yeah, I thank God for this teaching." Uh, you know what? Mm -hmm. Is that is that her name? Cooker, Nadine Coker. Coker. I'm sorry. Uh, it's interesting. I'm gonna say this, uh, and I'm gonna show you how we're prejudiced, Sir Walter, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Daniel, Philosophical Jones. <laughs> I'm gonna show you. Uh, how we are, we are prejudiced in, in our thinking and teaching. Let's say we are right that the person who committed sin last night can't partake of the Lord's Supper because they're unclean. But we get over to Proverbs or Psalms that says six things does God hate, right? Mm -hmm. And then it says seven is an abomination. Mm -hmm. The one that had iniquity in his heart, is that in there? The, the seven things are an abomination. Oh, oh, good. No, not a nigga in your heart. Not in that list. No. Okay. Perfect the one that stole the seed of discord. Yeah. The one that has a proud look. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you don't know if the person that's administering the Lord's supper falls in one of those categories. Right. Because a few of those categories is inside and mm -hmm. you can't see it. Mm -hmm. But because you saw my car parked outside the tithing last night, you deemed that I'm not worthy to take it. But you're standing there judging a person and you're just as guilty of sin as I am. Yeah. Yeah. So what yeah. we need to tell people is it's sin that we can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's good. Yeah. If I would be a lawyer. I would put that for, put, uh, uh, question on the floor if we was in a law court. So let me get this straight, you, um, uh, sir. You're saying because she got caught in adultery. And are you saying that you don't operate in a judgeful heart, a despiteful heart? There's no jealousy. There's no malice in your heart. Are you saying that there's no iniquity in your heart even as we speak? For instance, if she's found not guilty, are you going to get angry? Because yeah. if you get angry because she was let go, then you got iniquity in your heart. You still committing sin. But now, that's good, man. Uh, I think Rogers nailed it here. She says that's why blasphemy of the Holy uh, Ghost is unforgivable. It is an insult. Yeah. It's an insult to the Holy Spirit. Wrapped in unbelief and packaged as a dagger hurled into the heart of the triumph guard. And that's exactly Jesus was highly offended by the Pharisees. How dare you? Yeah. That, and that will, you can't get no, the, there is no other representation of the triangle God other mm -hmm. than the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And when they knew, Walter, I'm sorry, Sir Walter, <laughs> them rascals knew that Jesus did that through the Holy Ghost. Yep, they but knew. But they it. rejected him and they insult the Holy Spirit by calling him Beelzebub. And this is perjury. That's perjury. That's the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And uh, Bill Clinton did not uh, go through this council of the Congress uh, to get impeached because he touched Monica Lewinsky. No. Mm -hmm. They impeached right. him because he lied. He, he, he lied under something. And what yes. did he lie under? On he the lied, oath. He lied under oath. Yeah. You knew. Yeah that you did this mm -hmm. and in front of the council, you lied to us, even though you swore an oath. Mm. Perjury is a serious crime. Yes, sir. And he could have lost his job or right? other people went to jail for that. Yeah. All right. And so this is what's going on when Jesus was offended by mm -hmm. this perjury act, because you knew that the spirit of God did this. Yes. Right. And you gave credit to someone else. Uh, 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 Bra Braxton says uh, Todd is basically saying that if you believe in God, you won't go to hell even if you sin. That's he said. That's, that's, a, that's yeah. what Todd now, is basically saying. Yeah. Now that's a true statement. Just because a believer commits a sin doesn't stop them. But his mistake was when he says that they won't go to hell because they are uh, of sin. Yeah. Now we can we. We, he would have to literally take his time and put that on the floor mm -hmm. strategically yep. give us a fuller understanding. Yep. You and argue it out. You got to argue it out. You, mm -hmm. And that's what preachers are called. Preachers are attorneys in court. Yes. Yes. So he can't just, just throw that. Many of us who are strong, who might understand the statement, but however, 
still he says they're going to hell because of unbelief. So that's a yes and a no. But now you have to uh, explain to us what you mean. Yep. Because uh, many believe that if a person commits a sin, mm -hmm. that they're going to go to hell. No, mm -hmm. that is not true. Right. You know? That's true. That is that, true. That, 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 that is yeah, not, that's right. True. That That is not true. That's true what you're saying, but that is not true. Yeah, uh, because, yeah, the, the yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because if that's the case, man, it would it would be a sorry day on judgment yeah. for yes, all of us. It would uh -huh. be a very sorry day for all of us, okay? I'm not saying that we all sin. Correct. But there's going to be a sorry day. <laughs> no, because yeah. th there are some sins that, that have been committed by mm -hmm. so many, and the scriptures even says there is a sin that is not unto death. So, all right? Exactly. So That's we don't right. know. We don't even know what that sin is, and I'm glad that the Bible didn't tell you what that was. <laughs> Because everybody would try to everybody be doing would it. try to do that sin. Ooh, I want that one. I have what he's right having. Let me get three of those. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, uh, yeah, a two, a waiter, two. Let's get let's get two of those. I do have a refill on that. <laughs> Braxton, but he did continue. Is it who is this? Is it brother? Yeah. You have to believe, repent, and be saved. That's how the, I'm, I'm glad you finished it that way. Um the I'm, I'm going through these other comments that i saved in the in the in the thingy thingy uh, mm -hmm. plus not to mention not to tamper or compromise the crime scene themselves now mm -hmm. that's good now elizabeth is is part of she is she's in that 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 community the the um law enforcement so she i like the way she said that because yeah. the crime scene can be jacked up yeah uh oj issue that that whole thing with the killing of his mother his his girl his wife and the and the the gay friend of the wife mm -hmm. the police went in that crime scene and jacked and it up jacked it up and messed up the case if, everything and we do the same thing when we're studying because we bring human reasoning mm -hmm. we bring uh inaccurate teaching we bring a erroneous, antiquated teaching to our study, and then we start saying, "Yeah, well, I'm see that this is what I was taught." Now you just jacked up the scene. Yeah. Instead of going by the the scene that's there, you brought in what you was told, told and taught. So when we was when I was teaching this class in Columbus, I had a few women asking me questions. Well, so 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 what you saying is why are you asking me these questions? I just told you what the facts was, what the situation was, what the sin was and all of that. Why are you still asking me those other questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you still got people who re will reject the truth. He says they perish because of lack of knowledge or something like that. Mm -hmm. They perish. But the reason why is because they reject the truth. Yeah. They rejected it. That's why they, they perished. They rejected the truth. Now, that's that's good there. Uh, let me see. Who do I forget? Not all evidence can be presented. I, I, I read that already. Often in homicide investigations, they say, ask the body the question, and he will give you the answer. I've seen that on some S CSIs, what have, yes, what have you. Ask the body, and the body will tell ask you. Who yes. did it? Here's the body. Yeah. That's the body. Yeah. That's right good. there. You mm -hmm. ask him all your questions. That's where you're going to find all your answers. That's good. Michael Benjamin, the, the Bereans searched the scriptures uh, to see if what yeah. was said. All right. And they took it home, though. Home. To, uh huh. That's, I mean, right. I, I, that's what Michael is alluding to. But they, yeah. they, they took it they home. They searched it at home. Yeah. That's right. We yeah. go home and we turn on. Uh, whatever we turn on and watch, we don't even go home and 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 think about what was just taught, what was just preached mm -hmm. uh, at the church, and and get in the scriptures and meditate. No, we go home and we turn on uh, whatever, uh, whatever, whatever, and, and whatever. It pulls us away from all the worship that we just came out of. Last comment is from Roger says homicide, murder, and manslaughter. The term homicide means the killing of another person, but it's not necessarily a crime. Homicide mm -hmm. encompasses lawful killing, such as killing in self defense, mm -hmm. uh, intentional killing, or murder, a, a state, state sanctioned killing during war, and neglect or reckless killing. 
which is mm. manslaughter. All manslaughter. right. I want to, I want to get those definitions in there because we 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 were talking about it earlier in the show. Uh, sure. Any last and party words, Della Jones? Yes, I just encourage the people of God to stop asking man so many questions and start asking God the questions through your researching and interrogate. Don't be lazy. Take your time and read the scripture. Read those your lessons multiple times. Take one hour. Take 20 minutes and just continue to read it over and over and over and over and over. Because each time you read it over, you will see something that you didn't see the first time. That's good. That's Each good. time you read it over and over again, you will start expecting to see that. And now it will put a little whatever in your head and you will be thinking about that and, and, and expecting to see it. And not only that, as you're doing this, start right now on the questions, who, what, when, where and why. Ask all the questions you can and get all your answers from what you can see. And then any question that you don't know, ask those questions and then find out what you do. Find out the rest of this lesson. Go to the history of this lesson. Go to the background of the lesson. Then deal with the custom. Maybe this is a custom that's only for the land. But whatever you do, take your time and study. Yeah. And then ask all the other questions. But make sure your questions is asked towards God and not that's, to man. That's good. That's good. And L. Jones, Crystal Bush, answer that right quick. What about the first 48 hours being crucial? Remember we talked about that yesterday? Yep. yep. Because if they don't if they don't find it, chances are in many cases it becomes a cold case. Cold case, and then yeah. we and they will build uh, evil denominations mm -hmm. off of that cold case. Cold case, and I, I love the movie <laughs> Cold Case. Them <laughs> fellas have arrested people that were seventy five years old. You mean TV for, show? Yeah, yeah, Cold Case. Have you mm -hmm. ever seen it? Yes. Oh, absolutely. That's why I said TV oh. show. You said movie. Yeah. Oh, I'm. You know, I call anything that's not. <laughs> Anybody says action, I call it a movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but that's good. I think uh, we had a, when I Mitch brought up the Bishop Moody, how he had only just a few minutes to correct that woman. 48 hours. Yep. He had to do it because what happens if we had allowed her to do that and no one corrected her in that service, we had dismissed. It's going to get cut up in their minds and it's going to be stuck there. Stuck there. And some people may have never come back to that church and would have went out right. into the world with a cold case. Cold case. Believing that Satan can indeed be saved. Mm -hmm. and, and you uh, and then you can't undo it. Yeah. So some stuff, uh, open rebuke, Bible calls it or mm -hmm. whatever they call mm -hmm. it. Some mm -hmm. stuff, you got to get it done right then. That's your 48 hours. Yes. You got to pull it together right then. Do you yes. know how many times that I've been asked on my Thursday night Zoom because so many people were told that they could not be reclaimed as a backslider. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's why, that's why I, I, I preached on that Sunday because I've had like at least five people mm -hmm. on my Zoom, one each week, say that they was told that they could not be reclaimed because they were backsliders because they have crucified Christ afresh. Mm. So someone gave them the wrong scripture. Mm. So I ought to take the time to go through scripture on where that, that was inaccurate. Mm. Yeah. The cold case can turn into a reprobate mind. Yes, sir. And this is why Revelation chapter one, you kind of didn't want to deal with that because that, that would take us to a whole nother. Yeah, Romans one. Uh, what I say? Yeah, Revelation. I'm sorry, Romans one. Yeah, that would take us to a whole other thing. But that mm -hmm. is a cold case in itself that will never get solved, the reprobate. <laughs> yeah. It will never get yeah. solved until Jesus comes. I, and I think I brought that up Thursday. We worrying about who has a reprobate mind. Don't worry about that. Yes. Because we don't know. Only don't God know. knows who we has know. a reprobate mind. And right. then lastly, I told the person who apparently thought that they had a reprobate mind because of erroneous teaching. Exactly. I said, sister, if you got a mind to want to repent and to want to come back to the Lord, that's proof that you don't have a come reprobate on. mind. Right. Because a reprobate mind is when God takes his hand. Yes. Off of your mind come on. to do whatever, whatever your you mind do. thinks to do. Yep. That's a reprobate mind. And you have been turned up and over and over to it to it <laughs> because he said you were filled with these sins he yeah. says well, i'm gonna give you what you want <laughs> give you what you want <laughs> be careful what you ask for 
Exactly. So he takes, he removes the brakes. Yes, sir. And there's Absolutely. nothing, ain't no stopping us now. That, come on, you become the walking dead. <laughs> Another great forensic show. <laughs> yeah. Last but not least, because we coach it, <laughs> uh, is the one person you were talking about, a, 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 a person who was a, a testimonial, or what you call them, but the person who comes and testify, an eyewitness. Eyewitness. The court also had what's called a professional mm -hmm. testimony. Correct. The professional testimony would be served maybe as the presbyters, the fivefold, mm -hmm. um, someone who's in who's been in the scriptures. So that be somebody who know God. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. In the secular sense of my example, is it might be a doctor, a doctor who, who know the body. Doc, uh huh. So and they'll tell you that there's no way that that took place at that there time. There you go. There. And mm -hmm. the the great example is my cousin Vinny. My cousin Vinny. Because that girl was an auto mechanic expert. That girl, she was she was the man. <laughs> and they were trying to prove that these two boys committed the crime. Right. Based off of tire tracks. Tire tracks. And this tire girl says, tracks. no. <laughs> yeah. This 1968. Whatever. Yeah. And it, it was just so happened. Two of the same vehicles mm -hmm. was at the same place. Yes. Possibly the same color. Yep. But there were two different years. Absolutely. And she knew what year had the tires in the front Absolutely. or in the back. Man, when she talked about that thing, I said, you know what? That's so true. When I got stuck in the in the in the mud one time, wondering yeah. why one front tire wheel. was spinning. Yeah. And the other choir just didn't do anything. And she talked about the sure. uh, the, the differential. The differential the, uh, the differential, which yeah. is a mechanic that that Yeah. It shoots the, it shoots the wheel, whichever wheel needs it. That's right. It, it yeah. Oh man. And, it then was, they come with some cars, one all of them, so you can never get stuck. Yeah. I'm gonna say this: uh, many years ago, uh, I came home and my car had been hit, and so I asked my son Craig. I said, "Craig, what happened to my car?" He said, "Daddy, this car, can't, this man came out the alley, you know, on Albany. He came out the alley and he hit the car." I said, "Oh my goodness, uh, my the winch, the, the lens was busted and all that." I said, "So where where is this information?" Well, Dad, did nobody have a pen or paper? So he said he's gonna come back in the morning. I'm like, okay, that was stupid. I'm getting ready to leave. You know, Colombo was my, my uncle. Oh, yeah, I love Colombo. Yeah, Colombo was my uncle. Before the end of the show, he'll say, oh, by the way. <laughs> by the way. Yes, sir. So walk, I walked out there with my coat on and, and my hat and my glasses, and I started looking. I started interrogating and asking. I was talking to the car. Mm. One thing I noticed that the lens was busted, so mm -hmm. that's true. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't notice is by the fact that it was busted, the, the lens should have been on the ground. Mm. There was no lens on the ground. There was no skip marks of my car when it was moved, nor the car that hit it. Right off the bat, that told me my car got hit somewhere else and brought to the spot. Mm. Oh, I figured that fell out. Mm. One more thing. <laughs> That's the devil. <Deborah. laughs> One more thing. Yes, One more sir. Thing. <laughs> and you know what threw it off is when I asked my son Rodney, so Rodney, what happened? Rodney couldn't lie. His eyeballs crossed on him, and he turned around and said, man, and turned around. I found mm -hmm. out Craig took them to McDonald's and gave all of them uh, some kind of McDonald's to keep your mouth shut. That <laughs> means you drove my car a second time. Yeah. Now you're in trouble again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, Deborah. I'm Deidre. I keep, I keep calling you. Well, I think I called you right there. Deborah. Deborah. That's Deborah. I thought that was Deidre. Deborah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, can I ask you one more question? That's Chris. That's what Columbo would say. <laughs> yeah, we could. My my father could tell if we were. Oh yes, sir. If we, if we were, um, if we was driving the car, or uh, we just got in, or what have you, because he'd go and touch the hood. That engine. Yes, sir. That fellow was hot. <laughs> that fellow was hot. Depending yeah. on how warm it is, he can determine how long it's been sitting. There. Yep. That's true. Right Sometimes those cars, the engine made a noise. Yep, so sure did. Noise. They started so, cracking because that is that is the um, it's cooling down. The, the engine is cooling, and that's yeah. that metal trying to cool off, and it pops yeah. <laughs> when it cools. And then, 
the then block. we had a television that always told on us. It sure did. It had that dot. It had the dot. That dot in the middle. That dot. That's right. That and you dot told us, hey, Lana, <laughs> it just turned me off. Yep, yep, because those TVs had tubes. They were not digital like we have for today. And the tube takes a little while to cool off. Yeah, yeah. And that and dot stays on there. That's a long time. <laughs> Boy, you're telling your age, man. <laughs> you're telling your age. Uh, um, uh, who was that? Th this is the term, an expert witness. That's it, Joyce. Thank you for expert that. Expert witness, yes. Uh, lastly, uh, don't forget about the paid informant, a.k.a. the appropriator. They are on a secret assignment, and they represent their benefactor which is satan mm -hmm. yeah yes. paid yeah. informant wow yeah. that's good stuff wow. man leron bless it to you leron jeremiah great just an amazing brother here who always shares my stuff as you know you got some people who are part of your uh of, of the crew who yeah who behind curtains they just doing stuff to, because they want to get the word out there yeah good. and this good. jeremiah is one of them so i bless you jeremiah i bless you all right. All right, sir. I, we went over, but I wanted to do this uh, because there were so many wonderful tidbits in there that we were on fire. And I didn't want to move that to a part three. Thank All you. Right. All right. <laughs> so I'm done. We're done. <laughs> we're done. This is a two part series. I'm going to let this man get back to his all of his teaching, his yes. pastoral, his, his jurisdiction, his district. <laughs> he, he just happened to be a, a husband. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He just yeah to be a, get, that's his first ministry. Next month. See, next that, month. that's his first ministry. So he had to take care of that, and he ain't got yeah. no time to be hanging around some other Jones show in the bunkers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they keep it real too much. They, yeah, they keep it real. The bunkers keep it real, <laughs> brother. All right, all right. So we're starting up our Zoom classes uh, next uh, in two weeks, y'all. So if you want to get more information about that go to my uh on youtube go to my description below you'll see the my email gifted friends number one at gmail and join the youtube teaching that we are doing we get a chance to talk to y'all and say hello y'all talk to us back all right just put a bunker family in the description just put bunker family in the description you'll go there go to elder rodney jones sunday school on youtube and he drops a sunday school lesson gosh it used to be just once a week but uh uh he has been dropping quite a few lately because we used to be all united with Sunday school. Not no more. We have factions. And Paul says, have I, was I, was I crucified for you? It was, uh, somebody say, I'm a follower of Kojic. I'm a yeah, follower I'm of the international. I'm yeah, a follower. Yeah. A union press. Union press. Yeah. So it, that's what we have. Standard and the international separates from time to time mm -mm -mm. like last week mm -mm -mm. so last week I, I was supposed to have had four lessons yeah, it's too much too much too much for me all right y'all i think i'm gonna take the night off so don't don't expect unless there's a breaking news that if, if rodney ella jones fall down the stairs i will go live tonight at nine o'clock and we all gonna laugh together <laughs> they're all gonna laugh at you <laughs> who was that was that carrie uh, carrie they all going to laugh at you. <laughs> right. Was yeah, yeah. That was scary. Yeah. So <laughs> so we all going to laugh at 9 o'clock. Other than that, L. Jones, don't fall. And mm. I won't go live tonight. Yes. Pray for the people, sir. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you because you're a great God. And because there's nobody like you, Lord. Have your way continually among the bunkers and among those that are viewing for the first time. God, let your anointing abide in the hearts and the minds of your people. Thank you for understanding of your scripture. And we pray that hearts and minds are edified as you are continually to be glorified. Father, as we leave from this particular thing, we pray for those that will review and those that will be reviewing from this from this moment on. I pray for Sir Walter Jones that would you will continue to cover him and to protect him. We thank you for those that are supporting his channel and that you would bless them, O oh God, so that that channel can go a long way. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Now, God, pull back into this young man. I thank you for my dear brother. This is my blood brother in whom you given to me as a gift. He wasn't, he's not just a man who was born in my family, but he also gave me the gift of life through the scriptures. He was the one who showed me how to examine the text, interpret it, 
correlated and apply it to my life. This is the man. And so I thank you, God, for allowing him to live this long, that here we are together again. The student and the teacher has come together now. Both now are teachers with others who are learning from us. So thank you for his strength and thank you for his love and his steadfast continue to pour into his mindset so that he can continue, oh God, in the way he's doing this. You will reward him and I'm going to be right there seeing that crown put on his head. I love you, oh God, and we give your name the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, brother. If y'all on YouTube, go ahead and hit the bing bell notification. You know that we are live and hit L. Jones' bell notification, you know that he is live, and we all will be live together. <laughs> <laughs> okay? I'll talk to y'all in another day, maybe tomorrow on Theology Thursday. All right? See you soon. Bye-bye. Well, good goodbye. 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 Enjoy yourself. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy. Sir Walter Jones Show. <laughs> Goodbye.